Hey guys, Angie Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, back with another one in my altar book. Okay, let me just kind of get myself. You can see that. Look how big this book is. You're getting over here, you guys. This thing is like so big. We're nearing the end of this altered book. Okay, but I still have a little ways to go. Unless I decide to do this um, hidden box, then I then that t that could almost take up the rest of my book. I only have a few more pages to do, so we'll see. Anyway, um, I think this turned out really really cool so far. I did one of the pages, and then we're going to do this page, like the background, the same. So I'll ex let me turn my book around so you guys can see. I can explain what I did. And what I did over here, I'll do over here with a different, um, with a different subject, though. It won't be a girl. Let me start explaining. Okay, so what I did is I did the same thing I always do in the background. I did collage bits, uh, music note paper, um, dictionary book pages, blah, blah, blah. Then I went ahead <coughs> and went over it with some gesso. Then I um, let that dry. Then I took my stencil, which is this stencil right here, which I love. I don't even know what kind of stencil this is. I've had it for flipping ever. I put the stencil down. I took some um, like molding paste, but for molding paste, you guys, I use um, wall compound. I get it at Home Depot, and I buy it by a tub about that big for five bucks, and it works awesome. You get it over in the section where, like, they have, like, go over the section, if, I, if you go to Home Depot, that sells, like, wood and stuff, and then you look up against the wall, and they have all this, like, spackle and all this, all these things. That's where I got it, in that section, and you'll see wood, uh, you'll see wall spackle. I would go to that section because that's where you're going to get, like, that's where the guys go who are going to, like, do more industrial stuff. So, anyway. So, I take that spackle with, like, a card. What is it? So, I take that wall spackle with a card and just go like this all over it and then lift it up. And I do that right over the book pages and then over the gesso. Book pages, gesso, and then this, the wall compound. Then I went ahead and did some sprays. I used, like, di the Dilution Spray Teal. I used this purple. Um, I think I used this pink color here. And um, I might have used a little Distress also. Sprays. And then let that dry. And then I put my, um, my focal point on. Okay? All right, so I want to start, that's how I got to this. Hope you guys like it. And, oh, and the girl, oh, and then after that, I took this rose. This is out of one of my magazines. It's actually out of a book. It's a book full of roses. I'll show you guys the book. It's fabulous. I got this book from, on eBay. I've shown it before, but for those who haven't seen it, I got this book on eBay. It's full of roses, you guys. It is fabulous. I only spent like maybe five or six dollars, and I bought two of them. And I don't know what the heck I put the other one. I need to find it because um, I'm tearing this book up. Okay, see all the beautiful roses. And you guys know I like pink and fuchsia and purple, so you know I've been cutting out all those. Look at that big beautiful one. I'll be using that. See, look how many roses you get. You get all these beautiful roses. So, absolutely love this. And then I have a magazine full of watches because I love to use watches in my work too. That would be gorgeous to do on something. That'd be a beautiful headpiece. Put on top as a headpiece. Oh, I like that. Okay. So, let me put that away. Um, got this on eBay for five bucks. Five or six, something like that. Oh, and it's called, sorry, so you can order it if you want to order it. It's called the Ultimate Rose, the Ultimate Rose, American Rose Society. So it's called the Ultimate Rose. Okay. So that's where I got this big rose in the back of her head. Okay. And then this is one of my girls that I hand drew and then I uh, watercolored her up. Um, I should say watercolor and mixed media. It's mostly watercolor, but I do add a few other things in here when I color up my girls. So, um, I did her and I really like how I did this. I did one purple eye and one teal eye. I think that looks really cool. So let's get started. So 
what we're going to do over here is we're going to do the same thing we did here for the background. We're going to get the whole background done. The background will be exactly the same. Oh, I should explain. Except we are going to, this is going to be the focal point. Um, you guys, I have to do this facing the other way. Sorry. When I'm done with everything, of course, I'll turn the book around so you guys can see it the other way. I just can't. I can't work upside down. I, I've seen some people do that, and I'm like, that is like confuses my brain. It doesn't take much, people. After I've done the background, okay, imagine the background's all done here. I'm taking this hand, okay, and it's a baseball there. I know that looks weird. And I am going to place this flower over it and all these flowers. Okay, this is what happened. I was watching it was something on YouTube. I can't remember what it was, but it was about this artist, and she did the most beautiful work on the sides of buildings. And she uses spray cans when she does it. Her work is phenomenal. She did something like this. She drew a hand, or she painted a hand, shaded it up beautifully, and did all these roses, you guys, on this hand. So when I was going through my, um, my focal points in my files over here, I saw this hand, and I went, oh, my God, that's it. And I love it. And then, um, so it's like a handful of roses. You know what it is? A handful of roses is a handful of positivity and love, which we really need right now um, in our country for sure. And then I thought I would put this hummingbird at the top of it. Isn't that going to be fabulous? Okay, but before this all happens, we got to do the background. So let's get started. Okay, so like we start always, we're going to start with our collage bits. All right, so here we go. Let's start with our collage bits. Um, I need a paper towel. Oh my goodness, it has been so hot here in Vegas. But the worst of it is that we're not usually humid. We're usually a dry heat. So, uh, I know the difference now when people say, oh, well, um, you're a dry heat. Yeah, we are because humidity is insane. Along with a, over a hundred degrees, 104 with high humidity is horrendous. It's like you can't cool down. And that's the problem when it's humid, your body has a hard time cooling down. Oh my goodness. It was just, it's been horrible. I go to the gym. I do Zumba like five or six days a week, usually five, sometimes six, but I do Zumba. I come out of that room, my, the, the Zumba room is getting, or the aerobic room is getting so flipping hot. Then I come out of the room, try to get into my car. It's hot. It's just like, oh my goodness. You literally think you're about to die. And last week I did get, uh, I did get overheated because I went and ran errands right after the gym so i went to the dollar tree did i go to dollar tree i don't i didn't go to dollar tree i went somewhere else i went to dollar tree today anyway i went somewhere really quickly but it only took me like two minutes to get there so then the car never really cooled down right so now i'm still hot i'm still hot from being in the gym okay being in the aerobic room the aerobic room is humid as hell and um then i go into my hot car which you know your car has just been sitting there baking so it's even hotter than it is outside so i still haven't cooled down the store i was going to go to was only five minutes away so I get in my car. I'm still burning up. I'm only in that store for like five minutes. I get back in my hot car. I go to another store. You know what? By the time I got home, I had some like mild heat stroke. It was ridiculous. And that day was 50% humidity, I found out. That is why my body wasn't giving a chance to cool off. And it wasn't going to cool off very quickly because it was so humid. So I came home and went to sleep. I never come home from the gym and take a nap. I usually come home and I um, get on my Pilates machine. I have a Pilates machine and I um, tone up. Boy, I came home and went right to bed. I woke up. I was so thirsty. And I, then I realized, you know what? I think you had a little bit of heat exhaustion. <laughs> you got to be careful. It's no joke. When you live somewhere here that's this hot and then the humidity sets in. And we don't usually have humidity, like I said. Um, we don't usually have humidity. It's just been, I don't know. It's just been acting like every day it's going to rain. It's been going on for like two weeks. And then it won't rain though, you guys. So that's just the worst. 
So it doesn't even get to be cooled off. The pressure doesn't get released from the earth. Nothing. It just keeps building. But when it does pour with the humidity like this, oh my gosh. Flooding will happen here. All kinds of crap. So we're about to have some nice... Oh, jeez. I hope you guys are still there. Just a second, my camera fell off. That scared the crap out of me. Okay, you guys are still there. Okay. Let me just second, you guys. Things are going to look crazy for a second. I guess my camera is trying to keep me off my feet. That scared the hell out of me. Okay. All right. Let's continue on. Oh, sorry about that, too. Oh, that freaked me out. I'm just sitting here babbling along to nobody. Well, I'm talking to you guys, but, you know, I'm in my room by myself. Then all of a sudden, that big old crash. I'm like, ah! Okay, let's keep going. So we're just gluing on our collage bits. As Lori Marine Jenkins, one of the girls I really like to watch, she does mixed media, as she says, our underpants, she calls these our underpants. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I like to call them collage bits, but I love how she says underpants. I think it's hilarious. God, what is with my camera? All right, you guys. I hope you guys are all still there. This is crazy. I don't know what is with my... Again, you guys, just a second. All right, this is crazy. My, um... Let me see if something here. All right, hopefully I'm going to be okay here. It's weird. My whole system is like freaking out. It seems like it's on just fine. I don't understand what's going on. All right. Hopefully this doesn't keep happening. Gosh. What in the heck is going on? All right. I believe I have it on my um, thing good here. Oh, I don't have it on good. All right. Just a second, guys. If I lose you... Um, I will be back. As Arnold Schwarzenegger said, I will be back. Mm. Okay. Okay. I think I see what happened. I think for some reason I wasn't set up well. All right. You guys like my junk t-shirt this is my junker that I, that I do my stuff in I do my art in okay oh geez hopefully that doesn't pop off there again that hasn't happened until today my heart's in my throat it freaks me out because it's like it pops off it pops off the um, stand that I have it on and it goes flying down. It's crazy. It's crazy. Okay. Let's keep going. Alrighty. Piece on. Oops, gotta put some glue down. I usually like pieces that have you know a lot of print on them, but I like this yellowy bit with just partial. It's cool because of the coloring. I love old aged pages, especially up against new ones. That just adds more interest too. Okay. Add this in here. Oh, you know what I'm going to add in here? If I can find them. Oh, okay. I'm going to add some old receipts. Like receipts from the store. I have this Hobby Lobby receipt. I'm going to tear this up and use. Now, 
uh, Lori Marie Jenkins. You guys check out her channel. I love her stuff. She has been doing stuff with the receipts where she crumbles them up and then hits them with the hot gun, the heat gun, the hot gun, the heat gun, and it like melts them and they turn black and they give a lot of texture. So that's another way you can use your, um, you can do with receipts because receipts, I guess, are a lot have a lot of plastic in them. So um, look at this. I'm gonna put this piece right here. This is Hobby Lobby. Cool. Um, it has a lot of plastic, so it like kind of like melts. Which is the reason why they can afford to do receipts now. Not afford, but the reason that they can make receipts cheaper is because most of it's plastic. It's not even real paper. So, anyway. So I want to do that technique too. I saw that on her channel. But I, then when she did that, I thought, well, you know what be cool is to tear up our receipts and use that as collagey bits. Isn't that cool? So put your receipts in your artwork. I think that's cool. Okay. See how just listening to her idea then gave me another idea? I love it. Okay. Just a second. Let me get this stuff all out of the way. I have to clean up just a minute. We'll go on to the next. All right. So let me put my homemade podge away. Okay. And let me get a baby wipe and wipe my hands a little bit. So now what we're going to do right over this wet podge, um, we're going to do our gesso, which I like to use a thing called Kills, K-I-L-T-Z. I get it at Home Depot. You can buy it by the gallons for right around $15 in the paint section. It's a wall primer. And one day it hit me and I'm like, okay, a wall primer, wouldn't that be the same as like a gesso? A gesso is a primer and it works beautifully, you guys. And you're getting a gallon of it for like 15 bucks. It'll last you for like more. Like it lasts. I think I only have to buy a gallon every two years. I am doing way more mixed media now, so maybe I'll go through it within a year. You know, we'll see. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm not even gonna from the paint. I'm not even gonna rinse my brush. Right over the wet Mod Podge, I'm gonna put gesso over it. And what I like about that is is it gives like a crackle, so it's another texture. So it's really cool. Damn it. Excuse my language. Got that on my other page that I already have done. Okay. And be careful not to get it on the other page. Okay. And what's cool is with, you know, putting the gesso over this. For one, it gives it the tooth you need because we're going to put sprays over it. Well, before we do sprays, after this, we're going to do... Um, <clears throat> that wall compound or like, yeah, the wall compound, the stencil. So it gives tooth for that. It also gives tooth for the spray paint. It takes away that uh, shine from the Mod Podge. Plus it, it puts this in the background. So you can look through and you can see layers of stuff. Cause so what's cool right now is we have collage bits down. Then we have this um, gesso down, which is really kills. And then we're going to put this stenciling. Remember, we're going to put this down, and then we're going to put the wall compound through that. So that's another layer. And then we're going to do our sprays on top of that. So that's going to be flipping fabulous. And then we're going to put our, um, our subject, our main focal point on here. So right now, believe it or not, that is it for this video, part one, because I have to let this dry. Um, I have to let this dry before I can... Uh, put the stencil on here and put the um, wall compound through the stencil. But when you come back in part two, I will have that part done. I'm going to go outside. This is the only good thing about living in Las Vegas, you guys. It's like 106 out, 106 here with high humidity right now, which isn't normal. But anyway, it's 106. This right here will dry in like five to ten minutes. Really in five. I just leave it out for ten to make sure. Um, then I'm going to take this off camera, put this down here, put the wall compound through. And I put it through, I, I put the wall compound on with a, oh, what? just a card. Just go right through it. So I just take it and scrape it right through it on here. Then I'll go back out and within 10 minutes, that'll be dry. And then I'll come back on the video and we will do the spray together. We'll put our focal point on together. Um, I'll show you how I um, shade everything. So we still got quite a bit to do, but that's as much as I can do in this video. I will see you guys in part two. 
okay? If you and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. If you can give this video a thumbs up, that'd be great. Any comments or questions, leave it below. And if you'd like, share my video. That'd be awesome. And I think that's it. Okay, I'll talk to you guys in part two. Bye. And sorry about the crash. Bye.